possibly leave him. And so he was giving her the option to leave right now. But, you know, if she goes, he's like, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting a job as a social worker that's going to that can pay you the type of money because you actually are going to need a master's degree and you're not going to have the you don't have the full amount to get a master's degree so you're always going to be like digging yourself trying to dig yourself out of a hole and he's like or you can just basically stay here with me and then you don't have any of those problems and so he lets her know over the last couple you know few years i have been having you know Harris kind of keep an eye on you and that's why I sent him to come and collect you and she's just kind of spinning right now like oh my gosh what do you do like she's blindfolded she's in another place you know so she decides to get a beer out of the kitchen and he has like every type of beer there is except for the cheap beer that she's used to the Budweiser <laughs> so she just picks one and behind her she hears don't turn around and so she admits to him that she did peek and saw a glimpse of him when he left out of her room and he's like you know why are you telling me like I would have never known you know there's no cameras in her room he's like that's your private area like I don't have any cameras in there every other part of this place is Fort Knox so <laughs> but you know he did want her to have some privacy and um, she's like, I don't know. And he's like, you know, that was a very bad thing you did. And so he comes up behind her, well, closer to her. And he lifts up her shirt and he smacks her butt. And then he rubs it right after. And it gives her this sensation that she was shockingly really liking. And um, then he said something to her like good girl and she didn't like that and she's like don't call me good girl I'm not a dog and he's like oh my gosh touchy touchy I'm so sorry I won't say that to you again so then he asked her um tell me something you want right now and the first thing comes out of her mouth is I want you to kiss me again and so he does and this one of course it was a good kiss but her brain is running because she can't fully get into it because she's still thinking about all this stuff that has happened like and you know she couldn't get into the moment and so he, he asked her he's like you know what's going on where's your where's your mind where's your brain so she says just give me a name she was like even if it's not your real name but just something that I can call you you know and so he says Roth. So now our mystery man has a name. We don't have to call him mystery man anymore. His name is Roth. And so he tells her that is a part of his real name. So then he rips her panties off and part of her shirt. And he tells her, you know, if you want me to stop, just tell me to stop. And so he tells her, you know, I'm going to make you come hard multiple times and I'm going to make you scream my name. And it freaked her out. And then she was like, now why she wasn't freaked out when he was ripping off her panties? I don't know. But I guess once she felt like he's really about to do this and like make me come, but he, he's not going to penetrate her because he'd already told her, like, I'm never, I'm not going to just enter you. Like, that's something you're going to have to beg me for. So she tells him to stop and immediately he does. And then she asks him, you know, are you upset with me? And he's like, no, I'm not. I am disappointed, you know, because I did want to. I wanted to please you, you know, I, I wanted to be able to make you come. And so he tells her count to 60 and then she can leave because she doesn't have a blindfold on. And so she goes to her room but of course eventually she falls asleep but she dreamed of big hands touching her softly and then she dreamed of like someone tugging the blankets up closer to her chin and there was a tall silhouette in the corner of her room and then when she woke in the morning 
she could have swore she smelled his cologne in the room and i believe he was there so i don't believe it was a dream um i think he was definitely in that room with her <laughs> and so the next day she's in the apartment for most of the day by herself um so she does some exploring she goes to the library yay we love a good library and um of course this place is beautiful it has um just like in bell what is it uh beauty and the beast and how she was when she was in the library and she was on that ladder and it like spin well he has one of those in there so of course she did it and i would have done it myself because how could you not do that <laughs> not all libraries have those um so she's exploring and then she goes to have a late lunch and she goes into the kitchen and then she goes to roth's door and she all of a sudden hears the door turn and she automatically turns around and he asked her, you know, why were you, you know, why are you at my door? <laughs> and she was like, I was just exploring the penthouse. And then I was just curious, like what you were doing. And then he tells her, you know, she couldn't have got in the room anyway, because the only person that can open it is with the fingerprint and it's his. Um, so he stated that the pen, the penthouse could withstand like a missile hit. So this is like, again, Fort Knox. Um, and then he invites her to the opera. And she's like, I don't have a dress. He's like, you do. It's in your room. <laughs> and Eliza will help you get ready. So he had a custom Christian, uh, not Christian Dior. Yeah, Christian Dior gown made for her. And custom jewelry as well. And so Eliza does her hair and fixes her all up. And her and Eliza have a little small talk. And so, um, after she's done, she goes up on the roof because apparently she has to take a helicopter to where she's going. And Harris, of course, he can fly a helicopter because Harris can do everything. And so, um, he takes her to this high end restaurant. But before she gets in the helicopter, she calls. Well, when she gets into the helicopter, let me say it correctly, she calls Layla because she thought, like, shoot, I haven't called Layla like since yesterday and i was supposed to tell her like what was going on so she calls layla lets her know listen i can't tell you a lot but i am okay this is crazy this you know and and i will go into more detail later but just know that i'm okay and layla was not fully satisfied with it but she's like you know she'll take it you know at least she knew she was alive and well <laughs> so They have dinner. Um, he meets her there at the restaurant. They have dinner. Of course, she's blindfolded again. She's blindfolded as she goes in. They walk her in, sit her down. And of course, you know, he feeds her again. Because, again, she's blindfolded. <laughs> and so then he starts to kind of tell her a little story. Um, about his life and like kind of how he came to be so when he was 18 um he his father has plenty of money he's he's a billionaire um but when he was 18 his father gave him a suitcase with like a hundred thousand pounds in it a brand new bmw m5 and um he gave him it was uh, in the briefcase it was a passport and then get yeah, a hundred thousand British pounds, and there was also a Beretta M9 with three clips and a box of ammunition. And his his father told him, gave him the keys to the car, and he said, "You're on your own now, son." He's like, "This is your inheritance, and it's all you get from me. Go earn, go earn your own fortune." He was like, "You can visit." whenever you want but if you stay over the over a month i'm gonna start charging you rent and roth was kind of shocked because he hadn't really ever told anyone that story that was the most but i think you know sometimes when you just feel a connection with people you tend to open up and you start talking about stuff that normally you wouldn't just tell anyone and so after 
dinner if they were going to the opera and um they had a nice time at the opera he of course fingered her at the opera because you know that's got to happen and um after the opera she didn't see him for about two days and so normally she's like a really heavy sleeper you know when she does go to sleep and she woke up in the middle of the night and she could feel he was in the room and she called for him she's like roth is that you and he told her to close her eyes and she's kind of like why do i need to close my eyes it's like pitch black in here (laughs) but she did it she closed her eyes and um he told her he was so sorry for neglecting her um he had business that called him away but he was going to make it up to her that he was going to make her come so many times she was going to pass out and so he literally did that like he made her come multiple times with his mouth with his finger and he used a vibrator um even put a finger in her butt like he made her come till she passed out and when they were done he like uh took her in his arms because he had blindfolded her thus kind of what kind of what we see it's not the full one from what we see um on the book cover but he he you know she was blindfolded and then of course she went on to sleep so when she woke up you know, she's kind of nervous because she doesn't have a blindfold on anymore because he had took it off while she, like, laid against him. And she didn't look up directly at him. It's funny how you get used to something that quickly. It was like she knew that was a part of the game, and it was like she didn't want to break it because I guess for him also that was an issue of trust. And so once he felt like he could trust her more, then he would kind of reveal himself more. But there's also more to it as well. Um, so she didn't look directly up at him and then Roth finally says to her it's time he's like look at me and so of course when she looks at him he's this gorgeous man Um, she describes him like someone he looks like some type of rock star dude (laughs) Um, and he just he doesn't look normal like he's just this beautiful looking man so of course she wants to screw him now like okay let's do this she's ready (laughs) like he's already given her like these mind-blowing orgasms already so then to see this man and he looks like this it's like okay let's do this um so he's like you know you tempt me but no he's like he wanted her he's had this you know fantasy of having her in his bed and that's where he's gonna have her in his bed and so she wants him you know but he's not, he's not going to give in at all <laughs> so she's like well let me at least you know do something for you like jeez you know you got me off so many times so she's like at least let me give you a blow job so she does and um she was like all ready to let this man come in her mouth and everything like she was ready for it and he was like no 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 not like that and so he winds up like coming in her hands and which is just weird to me like i don't know it was the whole thing's weird but it was like oh my gosh so she goes she washes up and he's like you know we got a long day ahead of us so he has a day planned for them to go sailing um and of course she's never gone and um they have a really nice time um you know she's fully turned on they almost had sex in the room on the boat but you know he was committed to like not doing it but she tried so hard to get him it almost worked and so then he was like okay since you want to tease me i'm gonna tease you so he of course starts fingering her again and then he actually takes his dick out and he's a he sticks it in her like kind of and then so she can feel he's huge and then he takes it out and she's like no put it back he's like no i told you to wait so now you can feel what i'm feeling and i was like so they still had like a nice time like after that you know they swim and do all these great things so it was it was a it was a nice day and so then um they're hungry so they're gonna go to a um a restaurant and so while they're driving because they're in a bentley drop top and so while they're driving, there's this trucker that comes up next to him. And I guess Roth saw desire in the man's eyes. <laughs> so he, of course, is very possessive. And so he wanted that guy to know that that was his. And so he was told her, he's like, take your panties off. 
And she was like, what? He said, take your panties off. 